Welcome to my wife's garage. Yep, today it's my wife's garage because today I'm working on her 2017 Nissan Murano. So it seems that whenever the blower motor kicks on for the AC or for the heat, then it goes tick, 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 making a noise. So um, we're going to cover how to pull the blower out on, on this particular car. So this is a 2017 Nissan Murano. Um, and, and this applies for the 17 and up uh, as of now. And it's very, <clears throat> it's nearly the same for the, the previous model years. Just just some, some minor, very minor uh, variations in it. But uh, you could watch this and, and probably take care of just about any Nissan Murano, um, Nissan Maxima, um, anything in, in the, the similar family product lines. Um, so there's, uh, there's eight screws that hold the glove compartment in. We're going to pull the glove compartment out. We're going to actually, first we'll, we'll take the door off of the glove compartment, then we'll pull the glove compartment out and, and um, disconnect some wire on the back side of it to get it out of the way and then drop the, uh, the actual blower motor and take a look at it. So uh, anyway, uh, oh, little tidbit. There are actually two fuses, two 15 amp fuses for your blower motor. And they're on the other side. Uh, I'm on the passenger side right now. The fuses are on the driver's side. There's a fuse compartment uh, just above the left knee of the driver. And there's two 15 amp fuses in there on the inside cover of the, uh, the fuse door. There's a, a schedule that shows you which fuses it is. I know it's one of, one of them's the top left and, and the other one's like nine or ten fuses down also on the left hand side but anyway um, like I said just reference the schedule and and uh, you'll you'll find the right ones kind of sucks pulling them out <clears throat> um, whatever whatever engineer dreamed up the idea of put sticking that fuse panel in there and uh, in a, inside of a hole that uh, you know an adult hand barely fits in um, well kind of like to slap that guy but you can get to them it's just not pleasant so Without further ado, let's uh, let's get into taking this taking this blower motor out. So to give you an idea of what we're in for, um, <clears throat> this is the glove compartment. When we pull that down, <clears throat> then there's uh, a couple clips here, one on each side. They they actually catch the door so that it doesn't fall down. Um, you flex those and and get those to release, so the door will come on down. And then there's a, a cable that slows the descent of the door. That's all it does. There's, so there's a cable. It, it goes up into uh, a, a little spring cylinder that's, that's out of sight right now. Uh, we'll unhook that. Just release it. We'll, we'll recover it later. No worries. And, and then just grab the door. Uh, once it's down to about, I don't know, about a 45 degree angle, uh, then we can just pull on one corner of it and... It'll separate, um, it's just a plastic snap-on hinge, so it'll separate on either side and the door will pull free. And then that will make available the screws. And there's three across the top, there's three across the very bottom, and then there's two inside the, uh, the pocket uh, for a total of eight screws that we have to take out. You don't need any power tools for this. I know you're itching to use them, but... Um, all of these screws screw into plastic, so power tools are probably not the. This isn't the right place for them. Um, just get a get a long Phillips screwdriver. That's all you need. Uh, probably a long one and a and a regular length one, not necessarily a stubby. Um, you'll need a regular length one to to pull the screws out that's holding the blower motor in. Okay, the first step is to remove this small panel uh, that's just inside the passenger door. Um, that's the first step in order to be able to remove the glove compartment down below. And this is, it's just a, it's just a standard panel. It, it snaps in. Uh, it's just, so if you have a nice set of uh, panel tools, then that's great. This is the, the place to use them. Uh, mine are in my garage, and I'm not in my garage right now. I'm in my wife's garage. So I went in the house and just grabbed, you know, the panel tool she had handy, which is, of course, a spatula. So... Spatula works just as good as a panel tool. Now you know you don't need to go spend the money on 
a nice set of panel tools. <laughs> so inside the compartment, the glove, the glove compartment, on either side, there's uh, these, well, it's a it's an arm that sticks up. There's a hook on the end of it, and uh, we're going to flex those to get those to release. But first, this is the cable that I spoke of earlier, and if you grab it on the back side and then pull down, um, it's just hooked on. Okay, so this is that cable. Um, I couldn't I couldn't work it with one hand. I had to lay the camera down. And uh, but anyway, if you grab a hold of it, pull it um, toward the rear of the vehicle just a little bit, and then down, then it'll unhook off of the hook that it's on, and then just let it go. It'll go up out of sight, but that's okay. We're going to recover it later after we pull the glove box. And then on either side are these these arms, and if you flex them, then they come down. And in this case, <laughs> actually, I didn't intend to do that, but anyway, when they come down far enough, then the, uh, the uh, door is just snapped onto these two hinge points back in the back. So it separated and, and came off, and so that makes available my screws. So there's three screws here along the bottom, and three screws along the very top, and then two screws back in the back of this, this uh, O&M pocket. So I'm going to take those eight screws out, and then I'll be back with you. If you've pulled eight screws out, you're ready for the next step. So whenever whenever this box comes down, um, there will be one or two electric plugs behind it. Um, in this one, uh, it has a, the power rear gate. So there's a switch over here to disable the power gate, and then there's also a light. So those are the two plugs that we're going to unhook. Um, if you don't have a power gate, then you probably don't have this switch, so you only have one wire. So we just grab on one side. And uh, there's a couple, couple plastic clips that are going to snap loose. Um, uh, so it takes a little bit of force, but I'm going to grab right here on the O&M pocket, and then over here on the outside, and kind of pull down. And you just pull down and out, and everything separates and it drops away. So this is—is is that showing up? Yeah. This is the um, this is the cable that causes the slow descent of your door so it's just it's just a spring inside there inside that sleeve whenever you pull that so we'll uh, before we put this back in I'll show you how we capture that so that um, once we put this back together it's easy to get to so this is the uh, plug for the light and over here is off camera move that a little bit over here this is the plug for uh, the rear gate so these are not too hard to unplug whenever you have two hands to work with. So um, let's see. Here. First, we'll do the the light. So I just take a screwdriver. It's kind of hard to get your fingers in there, but there's a, a clip you just press up on it, and and then there we go. That pops away. And then same on the other side. There's just clip that you depress and then it pops right out. So now we can get that glove compartment completely out of the way which is pretty important because there's three screws holding the fan in and um, one of those screws is pretty difficult to get to if the glove compartment is still there. Um, so there's a plug here for the fan. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect that now because um, it's a lot easier to do it now rather than waiting until until you, uh, you have the thing hanging. Okay, this is what we've disconnected. Um, just tuck that out of the way there and now there's three screws to remove. One, two, and this is the one that is difficult to get to if you don't take the glove compartment out. That's it. 
it's just that easy to drop that fan down out of the way. So now we can we can take a look and see what was causing the tick 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 tick. So in my case, there were two dead mice in the fan. I was out of town. My wife called. She said, the uh, blower motor is making a ticking sound. And she played a, uh, a, a recording of it, and it just sounded like something, like a leaf stuck in the blower. <clears throat> well, then she called me the next day, and she said, oh, yeah, I think I figured it out. Car stinks of dead mouse. So, um... In our case, it meant procuring a new blower motor. And if you'd like to know, um, that this little blower motor assembly right here, it's 180 bucks from the auto parts store. So that's an incentive to keep your mice, you know, someplace else. Um, stunk up the car, horrible. The entire, I mean, it was it was horrible in there. And uh, so behind the I, I can't get my camera in there to show you where this is at, but underneath the glove compartment on the passenger side, uh, toward the center of the vehicle, there is this filter door. And it's installed vertically like that. There's a little catch on the bottom. Um, you just reach in there and release the catch, and you see there's just a hook on the top. So you release the catch, it pulls out on the bottom, then you drop it straight away. Then inside the compartment is a filter. This is the new filter, not the old one. The old one, oh my gosh, the old one stunk so bad. Um, but you can't just pull the filter out. They can't make them, you know, like a furnace filter in your house uh, furnace where the furnace is the size of the opening. No. They make the filter so that it is considerably taller than the filter. So the filter door, filter door, and the filter. So you have to compress the filter in order to insert it into the hole. So you literally deflect it, uh, squeeze it down, kind of like that, to slide it in. And I mean the old one actually, first to get the old one out, you, you reach in and you have to press on it and collapse it on the end uh, so that you can roll one end of it up and then grab that in with your fingers and pull it out. Um, and then you have to compress a new one to, to insert it. So, must be the same brilliant engineer that came up with uh, the fuse box that you, you know, can't get your hand inside. So you definitely want to change this uh, if you've got an odor in your car that you need to get rid of. And then on that note, just a little piece of free information. If you have an odor in your car that you need to get rid of, right there is the best tool, a can of coffee. Um, I just went to the dollar store, picked up a can of coffee, and I mean the cheapest one that they had, and uh, then you just open it up and set it up there on the dash. Out in the sun works the best, um, and it will actually absorb the odor in the vehicle. So we went through two containers, two or three containers of coffee, before we finally, you know, it sucked the, the stink out of the car. And it took four or five days to, to suck the stink out of the car. But I'm telling you, the coffee works. We got that secret from uh, auto dealer many, many, many years ago when a cat got trapped in the car overnight and peed in it. Um, yeah, that stunk as bad as the mice, by the way. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. I'm not going to film all putting it back together. I'm going to shove this in and and stick that in the hole, stick my new blower motor in the hole, run the three screws in, and uh, when I get to putting the, the glove compartment back in, uh, I'll come back on video and show you the, the little tricks there. Okay, I've inserted the filter, uh, put the filter door back on, and put the blower back in. You don't have to take the glove compartment out to change the filter. But since I had the glove compartment out, it just makes it a lot easier to change the filter without this big thing in the way. I can reach right through that hole to uh, to get to the <clears throat> to get to shoving that filter in. So this is 
that retraction cylinder that I talked about earlier, uh, just that spring-loaded device to slow down the speed that your, your door opens. And it drops down through this hole right here, but as you can see, we're going to have a hard time reaching it later if, uh, if we put the glove compartment in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a piece of line through it. Um, in, in the past, I've used like a, a straw. Just put a straw through it, fold it in half, drop it through there. And that's all you need in order to be able to grab it later from the bottom side. And then you can pull it out um, and hook it back on that, that little hook that it goes on. So, <clears throat> now, when we, when we put the glove compartment in, it actually goes kind of in, straight in. Um, there's a female socket here, female socket down here, and then two on the other side that the glove compartment actually, the, the clips uh, slide into to, uh, to engage and hold it in place. And then I made the comment earlier that all of your screws go into plastic. Well, that's, that's almost true. There's actually the two screws that are in the O&M pocket in the glove compartment, they actually screw in the metal. So I guess if you need to use a power tool, you can use one there. All right, so we're going to get the electric hooked back up. Um, so my light on the back is up here. All right, come on, boy. Cooperate. My light on the back. And my rear door switch or rear trunk lid switch and now we're ready to put this thing in so get it up there where she goes was easy it just slid right in a little bit of finessing all right and then over here there's my uh, there's my cord for later so we're just gonna leave that hanging there uh, we'll go ahead and get the, uh, the eight screws put back in and then we can move on to the next step so my light up here Okay, now we have the the actual uh, lid, and the it just snaps onto those hinges. So uh, get her down about right there, and there we go. Now it's snapped in, so we can. Uh, Go ahead and push it up and snap these into place. And then pull on my string, get a firm hold on that little cable, and then put it back on the hook. I wish I could show you that, but I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, it's hooked on. And now we have our slow descent. So that concludes this video on how to pull the glove compartment and um, pull the blower motor and then freebie we covered the actual cabin filter and how to defunkify your car with cough coffee so thanks for watching